All right, today we're going to talk about bidirectional breadth first search. This is the algorithm used for finding the shortest path in a graph or a network. It is a variation of the standard BFS algorithm that searches the graph from two sources simultaneously. This means that you should use bidirectional BFS when you want to find the shortest path between start and end, and in this case you have access to both the start node and the end node. The reason why we want to use bidirectional BFS instead of standard BFS is because it's a lot faster. This doesn't make sense when you look at the runtime, because BFS runtime is ON. This is already very fast, and if we're counting it by the number of nodes, bidirectional BFS runtime is also ON. So how does this make sense? If we're just running BFS, we will go through all the neighbors of S one at a time, eventually expanding it until we reach T. If we start BFS from both S and T, here you can see that we meet somewhere in the middle, and when we meet, we know the path from S to T. Just looking at the image, you can see that BFS takes explores a lot more nodes than bidirectional search. In fact, as the search space gets bigger, bidirectional search is exponentially faster than breadth first search. I'm gonna go through exactly why. Let's measure BFS runtime in terms of branching factors and depth. Branching factor is how many children or how many splits a node can have. So in a binary tree, the branching factor will be two. Depth is the number of levels, so over here we would have 4. In this case, the runtime would be 2 to the power of 4. In other words, bidirectional BFS is faster by b to the power of d to the power of 2. To put this into perspective, if the branching factor is 2 and the depth is 10, the BFS runtime would be roughly 1024 and the bidirectional BFS will only be 32. This gap will only increase exponentially as branching factor and depth increase. In the last video, I talked about how BFS can be implemented using a queue to keep track of which nodes to explore next, visited to make sure we only visit each node once, current which node we are on. For bidirectional BFS, we need to run BFS from start and end simultaneously. If we're running BFS, we will put start in the queue and then visit its neighbors. If we're doing bidirectional, we simply put the target to the queue as well. That's it. By doing this, we will automatically explore start, target, child of start, child of target, vice versa. And that is what it means by exploring start and target simultaneously. We know when we found a path from start to target when we visited a node twice by both start BFS and target BFS. We can simply add a boolean flag to each element in visited. So here, st symbolizes that s is visited by start BFS. False means that t was visited by target BFS. This way, say if we have start BFS here, right? Uh, it runs BFS and it visits k. Um, we can see that in visited, we have k. And since this is true, it means that start BFS has already visited K, so we don't do any. But if we have a node from target BFS, uh, we can see that although we have visited K, since it's visited by start BFS, target BFS has not visited yet. In this case, we note that both BFS has visited a node, thus we have a shortest path from start to target. Let's do an example of bidirectional BFS with word ladder. A transformation sequence from word begin word to word end word using a dictionary word list is a sequence of word begin s1, s2, blah 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 to sk. Every adjacent pair of words differs by a single letter. Every si, blah 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 in the word list, note that begin word does not need to be in the word list. Nice. sk equals to the end word. Given two words, begin word, end word, and a dictionary word list, return the number of words in the shortest transformation sequence from begin word, end word, or zero if no such sequence exists. We have access to the start, we have access to the target, and we want to find the shortest path on this graph. That is a clear signal that we can use bidirectional BFS. Let's see an example here. So if we have begin word hit, end word clog, have a word list, we can see that hit can be transformed into hot, then to dot, then to dog, then to cog, which is five words long. So the output is five. As you can see, each node transforms to the next node by changing one character at a time. 
if the end word is not in the word list, or the end word is simply empty, like an empty string, or begin word is empty, or the word list is empty, we're going to return zero. It's basically impossible. Next, we're going to create the graph. What this means is that for each word in the word list, we're going to create every single combination of that word and store it into a dictionary. Next, we're going to create the queue, representing the nodes we're going to visit next with begin word and end word. We'll also initialize our visited set with begin word and end word as well. True symbolizes it's a BFS starting from begin word. False symbolizes it's BFS starting from end word. In the visited dictionary, we're going to track which BFS it's from and the distance of reaching that node. Now all we have to do is while the queue is not empty, we're going to visit one of the node, check if we have found a path. If we have found a path, we return the path. If we went through all of the elements without finding a path, then we return zero. As you can see, the bidirectional BFS element is not as complicated as you think. We're going to code the visit word node function. First, we pop from the front of the queue to get our current word and is it BFS from beginning. For each of the word, next, for each character of the current word, we're going to transform them into its intermediate forms. What this means is that for every character of the word, we're going to create its intermediate form and grab all of the words that we can go to from that intermediate form. For each of the word, we're going to check if it's in visited or not. If it's in visited, we check if it's from two different BFS. If it's from two different BFS, we can add up the distance and return the answer. If the word is not in visited, we're going to track it in our visited dictionary and append it to the queue to visit the node next. Here, we're going to sign it the same BFS direction as its parent. Funny enough, if you compare my solution with the official solution, you can see that my solution is a lot shorter. The official solution had to use two queues and two visited set, whereas mine just used one queue and one visited set. This is actually what inspired me to do this video. I realized that not a lot of people know how to write bidirectional BFS properly. In fact, in my next video, I'll talk about BFS coming from multiple direction, like indirectional BFS. And you can see that no matter the number of BFS, you only need one queue, one visited set. That is it. You don't need this convoluted thing, or else if you're running n BFS, do you need like n queues? That's just not how this works. Anyhow, I hope you learned a little bit about BFS and bidirectional BFS. See you next time. Talk to you later. Bye.